Hi everyone, today I'm gonna to talk about Bitcoin and the Lightning Network. Where did it come from? What does it mean and why is it important? I'm gonna cover all of that here shortly. Before we begin, I wanna give a shout out to my sponsor, Ledin. Ledin is the best place to borrow against your Bitcoin using your Bitcoin as collateral or lending it out. I'm a personal customer and I've been using their product for over a year and a half. Love the team, love the product. Check it out now, link is below. Okay, let's go ahead and switch over to the Substack. So the Substack, I call this my Substack because this is my newsletter. I write it every single week on Thursdays and then it comes out normally on Sundays, but today I was, uh, or on Sunday I was on vacation, so this is coming out a little bit later on Tuesday. And if you want to subscribe, the link is here up in the upper right hand corner or below in the description. So if you want to get it first again, get it on Thursdays. If not, you're going to find it here. All right, so what is Lightning and where did it come from? The great scaling debate, uh, most people probably don't remember if you've come in this latest uh, Bitcoin bull run, you've probably haven't heard about it. Well, uh, in the years leading up to 2017, there was a big debate between uh, two different factions in the Bitcoin community, the big blockers and the small blockers. There's a book called The, Sk the Block Size War, The Battle Over Who Controls Bitcoin's Protocol Rules, written by Jonathan. He's a really brilliant researcher. He works over at uh, BitMEX. Definitely recommend if you want the full story to check out this book. Fantastic book, walks you through all of the conversations and decision making that was going on then. So the core argument was around how to scale Bitcoin's base layer to allow for more transactions. Uh, Bitcoin proponents argued, so Bitcoin as in the Bitcoin we use today, uh, these proponents argued that it should happen in layers. The uh, Confederate faction, the Bitcoin Cash community, thought it should happen with increased block size, which means just like making the block size larger. Uh, block size being the size of Bitcoin blocks on layer one, which would allow for uh, more transactions. But if the block size could be so arbitrarily increased, it would decrease Bitcoin's decentralization, and that violates the entire reason why Bitcoin is valuable. And nearly all blockchains today think about scaling via layers rather than increase, increasing the block size. So the Bitcoin community was validated in their fight in the, the winning version of Bitcoin, which is the Bitcoin we use today. They were right about how block, blockchain should, should scale. When blockchains scale, they allow for more transactions to occur through them. Uh, and usually transactions are most expensive on the base layer where you have the most trust minimization. What do I mean by that? If you transact on the base layer, uh, competition is fierce because everyone else wants to use that block space to transact in a trustless manner. I don't have to trust my counterparty and if it gets, if my transaction has no X number of confirmations, I can be very certain it won't be reversed. As you move up the layers though, you sacrifice some trust for more throughput, speed, or cheaper costs. Uh, but eventually all layers settle on the Bitcoin layer one. That's what's kind of cool about this. And we'll go into a second, uh, in a second we're gonna go into lightning and where it came from and how it works. Uh, Hal Finney had this great quote from December 30th, 2010, and you can find this on the Bitcoin talk forums. So you can go look for this yourself. And he says, Bitcoin itself cannot, stale, uh, cannot scale to have every single tra financial transaction in the world be broadcast to everyone and included in the blockchain. There needs to be a secondary level of payment systems, which is lighter weight and more efficient. So very early on, Hal Finney, by the way, is one of the good, uh, one of the probably the best candidates for Satoshi. Hal Finney, if for him to recognize that Bitcoin needed scaling solutions back in 2010 meant that a lot of other folks did as well. You could definitely tell that Bitcoin wasn't meant to have the transaction throughput of Visa. It was meant to meant to be a uh, you know Fed wire or Gold 2.0 sort of settlement system. And why are the, there are many scaling so solutions for Bitcoin? Lightning is the most popular one in wide use today. Below, we'll dive into Lightning and how it works. So history of Lightning. The Lightning Network was proposed by in 2015 by Thaddeus Dreija, I think is his. I, I've met him a couple times, I'm sorry if I mispronounced your name, and Joseph Poon, um, who used to be in San Francisco, and I've met him, met him a, a couple times as well. He went on to work on some projects over on Ethereum. Um, these two researchers, researchers wanted to expand on the discussion of payment channels by Satoshi, because Satoshi first came up with this concept a long time ago, and um, described to it, I uh, described it uh, to fellow Bitcoin core developer, Mike Hearn. Um, and I think the, uh, what, what this meant is that the emails in which Mike Hearn published, I think came out in, in this era versus like Satoshi, I believe in ceased communication years before that. Um, Dreja and Poon detailed that Visa had over, over 40,000 transactions per second at its maximum peak during like the holidays. And so for Bitcoin to be the world's financial system, it would have to figure out ways to scale as it currently can only handle seven transactions per second. 
Bitcoin's Lightning, uh, Bitcoin's, uh, sorry, uh, Bitcoin's Lightning Network's off-chain payment channels were created to address the lack of scalability as channels allow for smaller transactions to happen seamlessly on layer two without congesting layer one. And there was a couple, a bunch of companies built around this. In 2018, Lightning Labs launched the first beta version of the Lightning Network. And Lightning Labs, by the way, definitely love this team. They're awesome. Elizabeth Stark is the CEO and co-founder. Same with, uh, he he goes by Roast Beef on Twitter. A lot of people know him there and Alex Bosworth. Great team. They've been working on Lightning stuff for forever. They were the first to push out the beta version. And uh, currently, the Bitcoin, uh, Bitcoin Lightning is live. So it is live and has millions of folks using it. Um, and we've seen tons and tons of usage. Before we begin, I want to give a shout out to Choice, one of my sponsors. As most of you know, when you hodl, you don't have to pay taxes. But what if I told you that you could hodl and when you eventually sell your Bitcoin, you wouldn't have to pay any taxes then. Well, I didn't think that was possible until I found a Choice IRA. Choice is the best retirement account to set up for Bitcoiners that lets you buy and hold Bitcoin in stocks without paying a dime to the government. And how does that work? Choice is an IRA. They have IRAs and Roth IRAs, which means it's a special type of retirement account where you don't pay taxes if you hodl until a certain age, along with some other stipulations. And the best part, you can self-custody your Bitcoin with Choice, which means that you don't have to trust Choice or anyone else with your Bitcoin or your private keys. It's the perfect retirement solution for Bitcoiners. The best time to start stacking sats was 11 years ago. The second best time is today. Search stack sats in the app store or choiceapp.io slash held. Link is included in the description below. Go get, check it out right now. So how does it work? I thought this visualization of the Lightning Network by Twitter user Pi Moment was really cool. So he came up with this actually just a few days ago to show the interconnectivity of different Lightning nodes. And I thought this was super cool because it, it very much shows how, yes, Lightning introduces less, it introduces scalability and you have to give up some trust with that, but it's still very decentralized and very much part of the core ethos of Bitcoin's, um, you know, Bitcoin's thought process on scaling. So I wanna highlight here, by the way, that this is a very simple version of Lightning. There's a lot more complexity that you can do with it. Um, but I'm just going to cover the very minimum basics of how it works. So Lightning enables the creation of a peer-to-peer -peer payment channel done via two on-chain transactions to open the channel. So each party on-chain transaction uh, between two parties for a certain duration and both, both post equal amounts of collateral. So 0.1 BTC, for example. Once the channel is opened, it allows them to send nearly unlimited transactions back and forth that are instant and super cheap. After the duration is over, so the duration in which the channel has been opened, the net value settles on the Bitcoin blockchain for each respective party. So for example, um, myself and Bill transact back and forth after one month, which we set the duration of the channel to be open one month. Whatever the net value is in either one of our pockets, that's what settles on the Bitcoin blockchain. Pockets in, in this case, I mean wallets and um Essentially, what, what this means is that whatever the net value is, is what and when it settles on the Bitcoin blockchain is what you have. But what's really cool is that each party can create other channels with other parties as well. So you can easily extrapolate, uh, you know, visually here how each one of these nodes connect to other nodes and you can transact across the entire network. You can you can you don't have to just transact between two parties. You can transact across everyone else. So as long as the payment can find its way to the other counterparty on the other side, you can transact with them. And so the way to think about this as well is like there's a series of water locks in which a boat, the transaction must pass through. And so there must be a necessary threshold of liquidity or posted collateral in each lock for the boat to pass through. And so I think that was a really good analogy. I forget who came up with that first, but I really love that analogy on how a transaction goes through multiple channels. Okay, so... This is a huge breakthrough for, for Bitcoin because it allows for cheap, fast payments that are highly scalable. Um, and in fact, if you haven't tried it out yet, definitely recommend you try it out with Blue Wallet or Moon. Great wallets to allow you to transact um, and, and try it yourself. It's a pretty magical experience. Okay, so with that, though, come risks. Like I mentioned before, as we increase scalability, we do trade off uh, uh, decentralization and trust. So... Um, there are a couple different scenarios. If you want a full kind of like breakdown of all the scenarios out there, here's four of them uh, that Colin Harper put together for Coindesk. There's a bunch of other ones as well. With any new technology, there's going to be potential problems with it. 
Um, there hasn't been a super major one yet that's caused like a lot of uh, funds to be uh, funds to be hacked, but do know that as you scale and as you add layers to a system, there you should typically trade off decentralization, security, and there might be more flaws because it's newer tech. So one of those would be uh, fraudulent channel close. So you know how I said those two counterparties are transacting back and forth because they created a channel between them. Well, one of them could try to broadcast to the Bitcoin network a fake balance between the two. So not something that that isn't the real balance between the two or the net balance. Um, and so if you see that happen, you need to broadcast your true state of the channel, which would then prevent them from doing that. Um, this can also be mitigated via a watchtower. So a third party can monitor your channel and uh, prevent a fraudulent close if someone tries to post a fake version. Uh, there's also one that's called a mass channel closure. So imagine all the lightning channels need to be closed at, closed at the same time. Um, this could pose an issue as well because everyone, like tons and tons of cha lightning channels are, are being closed. And so everyone's uh, sending a transaction to the Bitcoin blockchain. And there's only, only so many transactions that can be included. Someone might try the fraudulent channel close or other uh, malicious attacks in that regard. And so in conclusion, Bitcoin Lightning has had massive adoption. That's probably why you heard about it. That's probably why you're watching this right now. The capacity just topped over 3,000 Bitcoin. Um, this is just the, num uh, the Lightning capacity via Lightning channels, not necessarily the um, amount per channel or the number of nodes or the number of transacting folks using it. Um, you know, Lightning ultimately solves this problem of speed, throughput, and cost for Bitcoin transactions. It is the most widely adopted layer two technology for the Bitcoin network and is increasingly becoming the standard for Bitcoiners to transact small amounts. Bitcoin Lightning by any standard has been wildly successful. If you haven't checked it out yet, definitely go check it out. Hope you enjoyed this. If you like this, please subscribe, like it. It helps with the algorithm, helps get this out to more people. Cheers. Bye.